part five of our CryoClear training certification. In this section, we'll be dealing with a topic that's a little different than simply trying to remove unwanted spots and, and tags and other uh, growths on the skin. What we want to talk about now is a holistic approach to um, the health of the skin, the health of the body, because if we start with that, then we're much less likely to have the spots occurring, the accumulation of lipofusin, the accumulation of melanin in particular areas, and our overall health and well-being is much improved. And so we start this section talking about sunlight in general. In the previous uh, parts to this training, we often talk about sunlight as the culprit causing m many of the problems and much of the issue that we're trying to now remove with products like CryoClear. However, sunlight is needed. Just as sunlight helps fruit grow and the grass be green and us to um, uh, function within our environment, um, for us as people, it also has benefits um, uh, to our not only our skin, but also our cells and hormonal regulation overall. UVB radiation, when received and absorbed by the skin, it activates a myriad of health-boosting biocycles, including vitamin D3 and glutathione production. Both of these are important um, in the production of vitamins or creation of vitamins that are transient or not readily available through diet. Oftentimes, what we find is even with some of the water-soluble vitamins that sunlight would normally help trigger production of, we do not get adequate bioavailability when we take them in by food alone. So the sun is blamed for many issues, including melasma, age spot, premature aging, and it's important to interact wisely with our ancient um, enemy, the sun. If we do it wisely in light of what we need from it for vitamin D production, uh, for glutathione, for other uh, benefits, then the sun can work with us for an overall better health. And when you keep in mind that uh, vitamin D deficiency has grown to over 75% of adults in North America, you can see that this is a double-edged sword that needs to be carefully considered. If we talk about glutathione, it's basically a precursor for other materials um, uh, for skin health. It regulates melanin synthesis, neutralizes free radicals, and uh, reactive oxygen species. It's required for DNA repair. It also contributes to protein production, and proteins are, as you know, are the building blocks of our body and skin. So glutathione is one of the examples where supplements are widely available. However, laboratory studies concluded that dietary and supplementary glutathione has low bioavailability and little impact on circulating levels. So the sun needs to be our trigger for glutathione synthesis. Now let's talk a little bit about that lifestyle issue and, and food is our fuel. Food though also reflects then internally uh, what we take in and how we use um, the energy. Um, as you may know, fat is the highest content of calories and calories are energy. Uh, sugar is the simplest to convert to energy but also in excess brings about um, uh, fat because any excess sugar is always converted to fat. So any well-nourished skin is going to have food um, in the form of proper nutrition and also hydration. Um, alongside of this comes the ability of the sun to help, help with healthier um, appearance of skin. And if properly metered, then photoaging is minimized and proper nutrition is the best way to do this. So the, um, the best way to, to um, uh, achieve the goal of healthier skin, of course, is to stay away from foods or um, meats that have uh, the potential for pesticides, uh, high volume factory farming, uh, cheap carbs like corn syrup, all of which carry not only the sugar and fat that they bring, but also the chemicals and processes used to make them. Alongside our carbohydrates, uh, we also need to think about the fats that we choose very wisely. You hear a lot in the news about saturated fats and polyunsaturated fats, trans fats, and all of it really comes down to energy production 
because fat is broken down ultimately into sugar, into um, glucose. But there is a difference in the types of fats that we may use. Um, Vegetable-based fats like avocados or olive oil or coconut oils all break down in, with fewer byproducts as compared to other types of fats like trans fats which come from certain processes or animal fats. Um, overall we know that um, antioxidants can help offset this. However, these free radicals are really the culprits which start a, a, a number of um, uh, metabolic deficiencies but also metabolic problems, some of which lead to cancer and some uh, lead to uh, uh, immune, immune system deficiencies. So we really have to keep a balance here between what we're ingesting and the quality of it um, to help balance out our lifestyle. There's many um, who discuss the, the causes of changes in our overall uh, homeostatic or the balance of life um, and relationship to food. Uh, many will um, advocate avoiding wheat, sugar, you may hear cow's milk, other foods that we normally ingest and maybe have been taught over generations as being good for us. And actually what they're doing is triggering a uh, cascade of inflammatory responses in the body and, and on the skin because the skin reflects what's going on internally. Um, reducing inflammation is one of our key goals. And if you look at the sugar plus collagen uh, diagram that's on this slide, you'll see that there's some research that supports that just the idea of the wrong combinations of foods along with our natural body chemistry leads to a decrease in overall health. And, and so our body struggles um, to stay energetic, to stay in balance, to stay awake um, and, and useful. So now let's think about a few other things that we, we can bring into our diet, such as um, whole foods, healthy fats, proteins, fruits, vegetables. Think about uh, the proper functioning of melanocytes as one of our key goals, all of which must be fed the proper uh, food groups. Um, be colorful in what we eat, ingesting uh, as many foods as possible with a variety of colors, uh, reds, purples, carrots of uh, orange, all of those are chemicals which help reverse oxidative damage and further help uh, melanin do its job of protecting us um, from the harmful rays that the sun, if in too much, uh, can have on our bodies. Supplement a healthy regimen with proper vitamins and um, uh, minerals as well. Vitamins are known as cofactors. All of the processes in our body go through a series of chemical steps, generally either breaking down materials to create energy or conserving excess energy back into fats. Um, all of them need vitamins to help the, the chemical processes occur. So when we see vitamin C, vitamin B, vitamin E, vitamin A, all of these are different on one level. Some are fat soluble and can be stored in sufficient quantities like vitamin E, whereas others like vitamin C um, are flushed through the system and cannot be stored. So we must, we must take them from our diet or we must uh, take supplements um, to offset what we lack in our diet. And so vitamin C, for example, green leafy vegetables, not just uh, when we think about orange juice, um, is important. Similarly with the B vitamins, which really help us on so many levels, including clearance of lipofusin, uh, hyperpigmentation. All of these things can come to us. And then finally, we do need uh, some small amounts of minerals. Um, again, nothing in excess, the, but in proper balance, uh, zinc, manganese, copper, um, all help us um, to properly metabolize, break down foods either to energy or to storage. Um, also, there's, there's supplements that you may think of um, a little bit differently, and that is uh, uh, basically to, to now start to look at uh, antioxidants. And what antioxidants are doing is, is counterbalancing the free radicals that form in our system. It's been theorized for decades that the start of cancer really is uh, oftentimes because of excess free radicals, which chemically attack um, some of the lipids um, or other um, uh, components of cells uh, 
uh, causing them to uh, replicate incorrectly, which essentially is uh, what cancer is. Uh, cancer can be uh, best fought through a good diet, exercise, and inclusion of antioxidants, which um, may come from green tea, it may be a um, certain plants like milk thistle and red clover. But uh, by all means, consider this part of your diet and include as much as possible. Uh, some additional support can come from um, herbs and um, uh, yellow turmeric is one that we oftentimes hear. Omega-3 fatty acids from fish, polyphenols from grapes or resveratrol. Uh, which we see in red wine, which everyone was happy to hear in the lecture. So, um, you know, have your glass or two of red wine a day. And finally, green tea also has a, a plethora of healthful chemicals, um, which again offset the imbalances that may come from the foods we ingest or the environments we live in. So to conclude this section, winning the battle really comes from you looking at food not as a calorie source, but as a, a challenge to balance in your life. And so you want to um, uh, try and work in as much as possible uh, veggies that are of different colors and of course fresh, organic. Um, the simplest way to think about it, organic or not and I've heard this some years ago, is that anything where you will eat the outer skin and consume it, um, you want to look for organic because uh, that outer skin would have been exposed to any of the growing methods, including sprays with pesticides. Whereas something that has an outer skin that you're going to remove and eat the inside, such as a banana, it's not as critical to have organic. But if you can afford it, go organic all the way, both in your meats as well as your, your vegetables. Avoid foods containing soy. For women, this is especially important since um, it's been shown now f through a number of studies that soy um, stimulates human estrogen, which can lead to breast cancer in women. And so this is one that you want to remove from your diet. Even though soy is a, a healthful source of plant proteins, for women essentially, especially, it's not a good, uh, a good source and there's plenty of other places to go uh, to get your protein. And then finally, um, N-acetylcysteine is uh, a, a boost to glutathione and helps remove um, reactive oxygen species. Um, N-acetylcysteine is in many of the veggies that you would um, consume, Brussels sprouts, et cetera. And so you, hopefully from this short reminder as part of our certification to not only look at removing what's on the skin that's accumulated over long periods of time, think about moving forward with your clients so that they're they're considering their holistic uh, approach to their health so that there's less spots forming in part because of the way they're living. So with this we can turn to our, our quiz questions in the next section. Thank you.